Hello, and welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Montreal. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. Oh. <laughs> Super handshake. All right, I, th they figured this it out. A, this is a rocky start to the game here. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe <laughs> in the booth with Paul Gian. We've got Massimo Gordillo. He's playing against Neon Kane Mueller, and uh, let's see what happens here. We've got a Mardu Vehicles mirror, by the way. Both players sitting at 11 and 2, with Ooh. just two rounds left to go in the Swiss portion of the tournament here. So a very important, like, win... Well, if you lose, you're out. Lose out. Yeah. So let's lose just out, call that win one. and maybe in, and right? Win because, and, again, and it's a draw, small tournament. Maybe. X2-1 might make it. One thing that you can see immediately, Massimo <laughs> at 11, uh, sorry, leading out with a Spire Bluff Canal, right? So he does have that blue splash. He has, a, uh, he has counter magic. And I actually, he was in the feature match on one of the side tables, and he, I, did re I did see him defeat a marble deck as he boarded in Ceremonious Rejection. Mm. So, you know, he did have access to those counters, and that probably is a large part of how, you know, he is playing for a potentially top eight here at the tournament. But Liam with the ideal start here, turn one Toolcraft Exemplar into Heart of Kirin. Looks like he has another Toolcraft Exemplar, so he can get in for seven damage here. Interesting wow. as well, by the way, both of these players are from Toronto. We're in Montreal here, yeah. but, uh, but they're both from Toronto. Massimo, he's part of a, a huge community of great players, he said. He's doing really well at this event. This is the first time he's done really well at a big event, but he's qualified for an RPTQ before as well. Okay. Liam okay. on the other side, uh, like I said, also from Toronto. This is only his second Grand Prix. He practiced by finding a list uh, from the Pro Tour, and he mm -hmm. tuned and changed it to what he thought the metagame was oh. going to be in. Liam was uh, onto Look something at the here. Start, what though. in the world? Wow! I looked. I read that <laughs> for half a second, and he's got 20 permanents on the battlefield. I was waiting to tell you. I was just like, he put five permanents on the battlefield. So you're like tapping three. my shoulder, like, hey, yeah, dude, look like, at this. It's like Inspector, Inspector, Clue, Clue, wow. Exemplar. Wow. So it's going to be really hard for Massimo to come back from this. No this kidding. is just <laughs> such an incredible start. Massimo already down to 10 life. You know, he might actually just be tempted to attack with everything and just, you know, sacrifice one of his exemplars uh, as Massimo can crew the Heart of Kirin. But if he does that, he gets in for 9 damage. Oh, no, no, he would have to crew the Heart of Kirin, of course. So no. trigger, trigger. Crew. Okay, so nice he's going to... Nice jamming anyway. He, he is opting to get in um, for... It looks like if he eats the Toolcraft exemplar, still gets in for 6 damage. Significant. Right. That is putting Massimo down to four. The thing is, like, the... These Marta Vehicles decks, they don't really play any sweepers in the main deck. No. So, when you're behind, <laughs> the deck is really bad at coming back. Yeah, it's really right? tough to come back. Yeah. And it looks like Liam's going to go ahead and crack a clue looking to find land drops, which he does. Yeah. <clears throat> he has Ar Archangel Avacyn in his hand, and I think he'd like to try to get up to five mana. Right, right, yeah. And he does have another uh, clue that he can crack. Yep. Massimo at four. Yeah, Massimo with a lot of action in his hand, but just needs to be able to deploy multiple threats this turn to stay alive. A lot of action. One energy. Okay. And use, using the, the white mana produced from the ether up because he can he does not want to take damage off the Spire of Industry as he's already down to four life. Yeah. Going down to three is pretty dangerous as you can just loosen an unlicensed disintegration. And did he find an untapped land? He did not. Don't believe he did, no. Ooh, but he does have a declaration in stone, but not going to do a whole lot here. Going to offer, well, I shouldn't say offer a trade. He's going to force a trade. Yeah, forced to trade, or, I mean, Massimo does have three mana open. And he, and he actually has an unlicensed disintegration, too, Paul. Right. He might be tempted to just use it here. And, yeah, again, Liam has a backup Heart of Kirin, so he just he doesn't mind trading the Heart of Kirin for either disintegration or Heart of Kirin right mm -hmm. now. And Liam should fire it off here before Liam does play an untapped fifth land, because many of these Martellists do play two copies of Archangel Avacyn in the main deck. Totally. Which he does have. Yeah. In hand, in fact. Okay, so okay. he's going to go two drop, two drop. Here, have a clue, but since I'm so far ahead and you already had a clue anyway, it's unlikely right. to matter. Yeah, Massimo just does not have the time right now to crack those clues. And, yeah, I do like the declaration there. Now Massimo can't even crew the Heart of Kirin. He needs to play something here. 
Yeah, like, that was a smart play. It's interesting because you look at that play on its surface and you think, well, why is he bothering to kill something that can't block anyway? Right. But he effectively is taking a blocker off the battlefield there because of the, the heart of Kieran. Exactly. And he's got a Toolcraft Exemplar here. He can go down to three, and I, I, I think he needs to because he, he needs the Heart of Kieran to block. And then he can use a cut to get rid of maybe the Toolcraft Exemplar because, you know, you, you, at this point, Liam only has one card in hand, right? Yeah. You can just hope he doesn't have a creature. If you cut the Toolcraft Exemplar, maybe he can't crew the Heart of Kieran and attack. There's only two power on the board right now if he uses the cut. But Massimo probably very, very concerned about the potential unlicensed disintegration that Liam could have. And going to three again, very, very dangerous. But he might not have a choice here. Oh, of course. What? The the exemplar, that doesn't that only triggers on on your upkeep, right? Beginning of combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But on your turn. Your turn. Right, right. So he, sorry. So he cannot actually use the Exemplar to crew the Heart of Kieran on defense. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if he would play it, he would only have it as an option to double block a, maybe a Thraben Inspector. Yeah, I mean, he know. would be most right. of the way to crewing up the, the Heart of Kieran, but... Yeah. He could opt to maybe crack a clue here then, because he, he might be <laughs> committing himself to already using a, a cut to ribbons here on a Toolcraft Exemplar. Okay, he's going to play the Toolcraft Exemplar. What else are you going to do, Massimo? Oh, is he attacking? Huh. I kind of got that distinctive <laughs> vibe. Okay. I guess if, if his plan is not to... Not to block with the exemplar, he's gonna he's gonna cut the uh, toolcraft here and just hope wow. that Liam doesn't have uh, anything with anything power? to crew. But Liam does have an archangel Avison in hand. Yeah. So all he has to do is. And jam I think it. that was an unlicensed disintegration too. Wow. Massimo had to take a damage, by the way, to make that play. He knew he was taking on a lot of risk here. Right. And yeah, that's game. So archangel on the battlefield. Yeah. Trigger on the stack. Yeah. Massimo found himself in a very tough position took the line that he thought gave him the highest chance to win. He probably also realized that it wouldn't work out, and it didn't work out. Right. The thing is, the thing with that Archangel Avison, Massimo went down to three life, right? So if Massimo had one mana up, let's say he had something like a Fatal Push. Even if he gets the Heart of Kirin, mm -hmm. that would trigger the Archangel Avison, and then on Massimo's upkeep, he would still take three damage. Yeah, that's right. All right, that's going to do it uh, for game one here in round 14. We'll be right back after these messages.
And welcome back to coverage here at Grand Prix Montreal. Everybody's shuffling right now, so we get a chance to just kind of hang out for a few minutes, Paul. And it looks like, yeah, Massimo is playing the version with all the counter magic, which isn't especially good in the mirror, right? You know, Metallic Rebuke, not not, not, an, not an insane card in, in the matchup. I, I think, you know, Massimo definitely tweaked his deck and tuned it to beat, you know, Teamer, which was kind of the deck to beat going into this tournament. So I think he has less cards kind of for the mirror. Looking at his sideboard here, he's got, you know, a couple of Chandra Torch of Defiances, a couple of Nahiri the Harbingers, but he doesn't go up. He doesn't kind of play the, like, go, go up the ladder and play, like, Sorens and stuff, for example. Um, and I actually don't see any copies of Release the Gremlins either, which is a card that's typically sideboarded in for the mirror. Unless you don't anticipate playing the mirror. Right. This might be the first time he's played the mirror. Yeah. Somehow the rogue deck builders are all on <laughs> modern vehicles here. <laughs> And Liam here, he's, he's got a couple of nice ones. Sky Sovereign, very powerful card in the mirror, especially against this version where you, you, you're not playing any release of Gremlins. You just absolutely have to have uh, an unlicensed disintegration to deal with the Sky Sovereign. Um, Liam does have his own release of Gremlins, but he doesn't have any of the Chandra Torch of Defiances, which is a commonly played card uh, in the sideboard. It actually, wait, what? He's got three Gideons in his deck. Three. What, I, Aren't I'm you allowed to play four? I, I'm looking for the fourth one here. Where, where, <laughs> he might have been two. Yeah, he's got three Gideons and one Chandra main, and then a. Oh s no. And then no second Chandra and, and no. Wow. I wonder if it's like under the seat of his car or something. Yeah, he yeah, maybe it. maybe it just like fell out of his deck box or something. Three. <laughs> Liam, wow. You know you can play four of those, Liam. Right. Can you imagine? He'd probably legal. undefeated with four. No kidding. Two, two game losses he's, <laughs> or match losses he's received for... Maybe he's just drawn too many in multiples. And he's just like, nah, nah, I don't want to do this. Threat diversity. Play the, Chandra. The grievous offense of not playing the full amount of Gideons. <laughs> yes. It's like playing three Heart of Karens. Also offensive. Right. Though Liam may be onto something, though. He's seen Maybe he broke it. Yeah. Well, but the mirror, if he's got to keep, yeah, definitely slows down a bit. Both sides trying to be a little more controlling, some more removal. You, as you can see, cast out being sideboarded in along with cards like Nahiri and Chandra. Yeah, look at Massimo's hand. It's just a bunch of lands and planeswalkers. He's got an Aethersphere Harvester, which he can't even crew. Yeah, the planeswalker plan pretty ubiquitous for right. a while now. Yeah. You see it a lot. Nahiri, a nice way to deal with uh, a Scrap Heap Scrounger once it's attacked, as it can exile. Tapped creature. Right. Or enchantment. It, it, the enchantment does not have to be tapped. No. <laughs> All right. So there's the Aethers for Harvester with no friends. No friends. He, not, I imagine Massimo boarded uh, many, of his, many of his creatures here. I wouldn't be surprised if he boarded out something like Toolcraft Exemplar because it is pretty embarrassing on the draw mm -hmm. against Mardu. It's, it's a great card when you're ahead and being the aggressor, but again, on the draw, not the card you want. So can wow. Massimo go land? So no, untapped lands? So all of Massimo's lands will come into play tapped because of the oh. Thalia, but he does have an unlicensed disintegration, so he, he still does have a play this turn. Okay. And he's just going to fire it off on Thalia immediately. Yeah. That is interesting because you know, this is a, a, an excellent window for Leon to potentially play a Planeswalker, right? Mm -hmm. So had he held on to the Unlicensed Disintegration and Leon played yes. like a Gideon, you could have used the oh, Unlicensed no. Disintegration to deal three damage to a Gideon, which, which then, if you draw a creature to crew the Aethersphere Harvester, you would be able to finish off the Gideon. He might have been concerned about potentially negate or metallic rebuke because he saw Spire Bluff Canal game one, but he could be punished here for not waiting on the unlicensed disintegration. Totally. Now Gideon's at full four power. Right. Liam and Paul teaching us lessons together as he demonstrates exactly what you were describing. Yeah. The only time you would consider maybe using the disintegration right away is the turn before Liam might hit five mana because then you could get Archangel Avicent. Sure. 
I'm not sure Master Mage drew a creature, so it might not have mattered anyways. If only that Chandra was Gideon. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's Nahiri. She's going to go down to two loyalty. Yeah, but Liam's going to finish off that Nahiri with Look, the with the token. Yeah, and, and smashing for five as well. Probably. Uh oh, this one could be slipping away from Massimo pretty quickly here, and if it is, that's Liam Kane Mayer probably putting himself into the top eight. Right. I mean, he do, he may still have to to fight depending on how the pairings go, but he could could have a shot at a draw. In right. Of course, eight. he he could get paired down maybe, but yeah. Again, this is a smaller Grand Prix, so he has a very good chance of just being able to draw into the top eight here. And Liam's hand is loaded, too. Just all spells. And he's got the Gideon advantage. This Aethersphere Harvester, by the way, has yet to leave the hangar. Oh, oh by the way, it, my mistake. Li Liam was, is actually the one with the, uh, with the three Gideons. Oh, Liam's the yeah. one with the Gideons. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, well, your I mean, point still stands. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he drew one. <laughs> yeah. Massimo must, must has a ton be. of trouble here. Yeah, it is... I mean, Harvester is a pretty solid card in the mirror, but if you are going to be boarding out a lot of your creatures, it is a little rough to play both Harvester. I mean, maybe he boarded out some Heart of Kirins instead. No, well, he's found a Scrap Heap Scrounger now, so he can fire up that Aethersphere Harvester. Even in the spot, though, I think I prefer the Heart of Kirins because you're boarding into all the Planeswalkers. So even if you don't draw creatures, you can still crew the Heart of Kirin. Yeah, so he drew a creature here in this spot again. If he disintegrated, if he waited on the disintegration, he could have finished off the Gideon. But, oh, game. yeah, that's yep. just that yeah, is way too much. Way, way, way too much from Liam K. Mayer, and he defeats Massimo, though, two games to zero quite quickly. And hands Massimo his third loss of the tournament. He will be playing in the next round, though his chances for a top eight probably just disintegrated there. <laughs> Yeah, tough spot. Still really good run here for Massimo, and he does still have one more round to go. And given that it is a pretty small GP by modern standards. But again, it's possible. It's, it's possible the next three makes it. Okay, Michael Cochran and Daniel Fournier duking it out. These players, same record as the ones we were just watching, same situation as they were in as well. Ooh, I see a, that's a long tusk cub in Daniel's graveyard. Oh, yeah. Getting a little aggressive after sideboard here. That's a cool uh, sideboard, transformational sideboard plan. Right. <laughs> and at least we have game one out of the way, which is kind of the, the least interesting of the games. When you watch the Marvel matchup, it's just pretty much a race to Ulamog. But after sideboard, again, um, a lot more interaction. You have counter magic on both sides. Yeah, it plays out much more like a traditional control mirror. Right. Although my, Mike is currently on eight lands, uh, so he's getting very close to the point where you can just start hard casting your Ulamogs. And Daniel's also on seven. Tick tock. Daniel's like, I don't even want the energy. I'm just going to attack you with my, my Thopters here. Getting very, very aggressive here. It looks like he just has three lands in hand. Yeah, I think he's on, on empty. Yeah, he might just want to attack with the Lumbering Falls just to keep Daniel off Ulamog mana here, potentially, because Daniel, uh, Mike, Michael does have his own Lumbering Falls to, to potentially trade here. So get, get in. just take it too, right. right? So he gets to get in for four here. He's at 18, so it's, he's at a pretty safe life total, life total, so he might just take the four. Daniel desperately in need of some action here. Oh, okay. Oh, he's going to trade. All right, interesting. Let's make the hard casting Ulamog plan a little worse. Yeah. The thing is, he doesn't, yeah, he, he's got a ton of mana and additional lands in hand. I guess if he just drew another land, he can just cast an Ulamog again. But that Lumbering Falls was also keeping the World of Virtuoso at bay. Yeah. So next turn, I mean, Daniel still gets the attack. I'm at <laughs> <laughs> that is a legal target. Would you like to target my Thopter with your dis delivers? A dissenter's deliverance. No, okay. no thanks. I'm just going to cycle, cycle it. Cycle. I will cycle this Michael too. does have 10 energy. He just needs to find a marvel here. 
And oh. it looks like he drew a Harness Lightning too, so he might use that on the Whirler Virtuoso. Yeah, no need to do it immediately. Yeah, he could get negated, but yes. if it gets negated, then, you know, again, he has the out of just drawing Marvel. So I imagine Daniel might just let it resolve, if, even if Daniel had a negate in hand. It does seem to be the case. Another brick here for Michael. He yeah. finds a, a tune with Ether, not what he wanted to see. Again. Puts him up to a whopping 15 energy, but so what? He doesn't have anywhere to put it. Yeah, he, he, he really wants to find either a Whirler Virtuoso or an Etherworks Marvel, just a way to use all of his energy. Although, actually, Ulamog is a great draw, too. Michael has a ton of great draws, but so does Daniel. I mean, Daniel's got a couple of creatures on the battlefield, but really, it just comes down to, to you know, top decks at this point. Doesn't it always, Paul? Well, I just don't feel like this Virtuoso is really going to matter. Sure. It is unlikely. Yeah. <coughs> Three more damage. So Mike down to 11 and currently on what? I think it's 10 lands now. Or he, he can't play land number 10. He's just like, <laughs> I'm cycling this. All right, what do we got here? <gasps> He's, he cycled a bunch. So he what is certainly he? finds a bunch of lands. Nope, not yet. Still has time, though. Goodness sakes. Yeah, this clock isn't particularly fast. They're both just drawing all their lands. Yeah. I think that was a Spire Bluff Canal out of Daniel. Although, once you get to 10 mana, it might be worth considering sandbagging some lands because you might draw Tireless Tracker. Ooh, here's a big one. Ooh, Glimmer that is, of that Genius. Is huge. This is what you want to see late in the game. And that's the thing. If Daniel doesn't counter this, or well, he doesn't have a counter, but if Daniel doesn't counter this, Michael has to think, okay, well, he just doesn't have any counter magic right now. No way that because Daniel he would fire this resolve, it off. right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, what do we have here? Rogue Refiner and maybe times two. All right. Definitely keeping anything that's not a land. Definitely. Okay, he put Rogue Refiner on top. The other card must have been a land. Right. Ooh, Tireless Tracker. Okay. Uh, all right, so he's going to go Tireless Tracker, land. I mean, yeah, Glimmer of Genius, what a fantastic draw here. No kidding. And he's got a bunch of lands in his hand, too. Yeah. And I think and he, he might even have a, a negate, too, actually. He does so, have a negate. So yep. he's not, yeah, he's not going to play out the Rogue Refiner no. to keep up negate. No, he won't. And he's in a really great spot here. Although I guess at any point, Daniel can just top deck Ulamog. And well, that would end the game. Well, welcome to the mirror. Yeah. What is being negated? Oh, Harness Lightning. Interesting. Oh, you know what? That, that what makes a little bit world? of sense because if you look at what Michael has, I mean, if you look at Daniel's board, Daniel only has one energy, right? So sure. he, if he just top decks a Marvel, it's still not going to do anything. Okay. The only draw that would be really bad here if, is if Daniel played like a Glimmer of Genius or something. Oh, no. Or a Confiscation Coup. What about a coup. Confiscation Coup? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. No, no, use the Harness He's Lightning. He's got a Harness Lightning in his own guy here, right? Oh, is he thinking that? I thought, did he let it resolve? Yeah. <laughs> I think he let it resolve. feel like he let it resolve. He, I mean, he like can still Tireless kill Tracker it. was moving to the other side. Hmm. I don't know about this. <clears throat> I don't know about the timing, because it looked like he gave the confiscation coup back, but... And the difference here is a clue, right? Yes. Like, that is, given that, that it's is Daniel's turn Daniel. and he has a land in his hand, huh. it looks like okay. he let him go back, or maybe it wasn't entirely... Yeah, maybe he was just like... Wait, let me read this card real quick. Let's see how sure. this works. So we, we can't hear the player, so we'll just yeah, assume yeah, yeah. that that was a back a, a back upable situation. Yeah. So Michael is down to eight, but he's got the Rogue Refiner, a lot of great draws. He can just crack a clue here. Does that? Can he still play Nulamog if he draws it off the clue? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. nine. And he plays a land. Okay. Yeah. Rogue yeah, Refiner. Not find a Nulamog, so instead he's just going to cast Rogue yeah, Refiner. Can, can still find, again... Ulamog, Marvel, Whirler Virtuoso, ton of great draws here. Tracker. Another okay. tireless tracker. That works. Yeah. Play an untapped land here so you can find a negate after you crack a clue. Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh Michael, <laughs> give me a heart attack. I thought I was thinking the same thing you were, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he had it like bent. <laughs> it was like <laughs> that close. <laughs> All right, so that's another Whirl of Virtuoso, so effectively just another Thopter token. And Michael is now at four. He is at four. Right? And he, he drew, I think, I believe he drew a Whirl of Virtuoso, so that, that is a two-turn clock. 
But again, Michael has a lot of great draws, and Daniel has zero disruption. Oh, he, first things first. Crack so he's cracking in response because he might find a harness lightning. But actually, no, that doesn't do anything because there's two virtuosos on the battlefield. So killing it with the trigger on the stack doesn't do a whole lot. And Michael just has lands and in a tune. Yeah, he needs to find action and he needs to find it now. Yeah. The lands, of course, will turn into cards for him. But the window's closing. There's going to be two 12, thopters sitting there. He's now. got 12 men on the battlefield here. And that's another land. Jeez. His hand is lands in a tune with Ether. Yeah, and it looks like he's opting to <coughs> thin out his deck Fair. by playing the attune with Ether. That this now puts him on 11 mana. He can still play the land, crack the clue, and still cast an Ulamog if he draws it. Which is an important thing to consider because if he had one less land, I think I would have preferred to just play a land first. What happened? Oh. He's still shuffling. I, I guess see. he wanted to just take a look to see how many Ulamogs he still had in there. I, I guess so. Yeah, but Daniel's cutting, so it's... Yep. Yeah. Land. Make a clue. Crack the clue. He's kind of just doing it in one right, full swoop right. here. Again, even like a Harness Lightning would buy him some time. <gasps> oh, okay. Wow, that's a good one. Yeah. Glimmer of Genius. Glimmer of Genius. Again, World of Virtuoso is a fantastic out here. Totally. That stabilizes his board. Look, right. I mean, look how much energy he has. <laughs> yeah. He's got 19 energy. All right, here we go. Yeah, and Daniel doesn't have anything, right? Yeah, it's pretty clear. He's just all in on this uh, Thopter plan here. Yeah. Oh, and Chandra Flamecaller. Wow. He yeah. also found a Harness Lightning in there, too. Right. I don't even know if he needs a Harness Lightning. All, and the thing is, the tracker is currently a 5-4. He just plays a Chandra, minus threes, and basically gets to clear the entire board, and tracker will be the last threat standing. Yeah, I'd be pretty surprised here if Michael just doesn't go for the Chandra here. I mean, I guess you could be considered concerned about Sensor, but I actually don't think that's a reasonable thing to be concerned about because Daniel would have cycled it on his turn to find something. It looks like Michael agrees with you, Paul, because yeah. he's just going to run out Chandra Flame Caller here. There we go. Chandra minus three. Yeah, it's pretty cool, too, because, of course, it interacts favorably with the uh, Ruler Virtuosos as well. There's right. no way for Daniel to make, you know, have a Thopter Yeah, you can't have, here. like, a floating Thopter yeah, that comes You always in think, after. like, I'll do it in response, <laughs> and then it'll resolve, yeah. and then I'll get the Thopter. But no, right. that doesn't work like that, of course. This is... It's a little bit risky because Daniel could top deck his own Chandra, and because he attacked with Tracker, Michael could have lost oh. to a top deck Chandra, right? Would I mean, you it, have attacked there? Would you take that risk he on? He has Chandra in his deck. I, I don't know that I would yeah. because you're clearly ahead here. You have a Tracker and you have a Chandra on the battlefield. The only way you lose, I mean, there, there's a lot of ways you could lose, but top, a top deck Chandra, you want to at least prevent that out from happening, yeah, right? I think you're right. He's going to make a clue, and then I'm assuming he's going to zero Chandra? Yeah, I guess a lot of, a lot of that also depends. Wait. I am wrong. Huh. I mean, he has three lands and a Harness Lightning in his hand. I guess he just wants to get this thing done as quickly okay, as this possible. Is, this is a two-turn clock. Oh, and he, and he just drew the Marvel. He drew a Marvel. He for drew the, the Marvel. Okay. okay. Is that even... He's just going to leave it up as a potential counterspell of okay. some sort. Okay, interesting. But Fournier is way behind now. Well, there's yeah. Tyo's tracker off the top. That shouldn't be too concerning. You know, it's basically just you get to cycle. You mm -hmm. get to draw one card here. Mm -hmm. tr trigger on the stack. He's probably looking to cast Harness Lightning. Again, I, I don't think I would use Harness Lightning. You might lose to Top Deck Chandra. That's right. And yeah. you know what? Daniel couldn't find anything, and that's going to do it. Michael Cochran wins game number two which will bump us cleanly into game number three between these two. Yeah. This is our secondary table. So many little edges you can get in the matchup. The World of Virtuosos almost got Daniel there. And it does look like both players just boarded out their puzzle nuts. And Michael, yeah, just boarded down to just two Ulamogs. And it looks like he shaved a, a Marvel as well because, again, you don't have a lot of energy after sideboard. And now that he's on the draw, he's mixing it up. He's looking to bring in the Radiant Flames as he's the one who doesn't want to get run over Interesting. by, you know, Daniel's World of Virtuosos and Servant of the Conduits, potentially. Conduit. Con Conduit, is that, is that French? We're in Quebec. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Is that <laughs> even the correct way to say it? 
Which one? Conduit? Con con conduit. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Savant de Conduit. I'm calling it. Also, the Starbucks here is a cafe Starbucks. Uh, yeah. It's fancier. You know it's better. <laughs> Although I did notice that when we went in, literally exactly the same in every oh, way. Oh, no, no. It's the, yeah. It's just 100% just normal Starbucks. No, it's not. It's cafe Starbucks. Oh, right. Premium. Excuse me. <laughs> so what do we have here? A couple of sensors that, that have been boarded out, all of the puzzle knots, two Ulamogs, and considering the Chandra, it did win you the game. Maybe you bring it back in. Maybe. Yeah, sideboarding is very difficult in this matchup. There's a lot of different approaches you can take. Because if you board out a lot of your energy stuff and then you try to play this bit like this mid range game with sweepers and all that stuff, you might be stuck with just all these like kind of sweepers in your hand and your opponent just resolves a marvel. Mm -hmm. It is a very tough set of things to try to combat. Right. Cheap huge threats, expensive huge threats, and then these sort of random go wide style right. draws, you know. Yeah. What the heck? And the thing is so many of these games just end differently, right? Earlier, we just saw a turn five Marvel with the spell backup win mm -hmm. the game yep. in a post boarded game. And this one, a World of Virtuoso almost won a game, you know, but it was actually Tireless Tracker that took over. It's yeah. just. And sometimes, you know, Chandra Flame Color doesn't seem like it would be great because it requires you to tap out on turn six. But hey, on turn 12, you're going to have counter spell backup. The problem with Chandra is just theoretically, you play out the Chandra, and then your opponent just untaps and plays Marvel, right? right. So. That is a concerning problem, to say the least. Game three. Plenty of time here, but the, the games do take much longer after sideboard, if you notice, in this matchup. <laughs> An exert token is a, is a oh, glory bringer. I was trying to figure out what card in mm -hmm. this in this deck could have uh, an exert card. It says embalm on the back of what it. What about too. maybe a hoodie B? Just just a hoodie B. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Sideboard plan for X hoodie bed. B. Get aggro with some hoodie Bs. <laughs> Take five. <laughs> yeah. Your move. I could play tireless tracker or hooded brawler. Yeah. Mm, mm, well, got a foil hooded yeah. brawler. <laughs> Ooh, I see a lot of trackers. Only two lands, maybe? Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like Daniel is a little bit light on lands. But still keeping? Yeah, but he's got a nice miss. I mean, he's got, he's got two lands with a Servant of the Conduit, and it looks like one to two trackers in hand. It could be another Servant of the Conduit. So Servant, he, of, the, he, servant he, of the what? Co Conduit. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. I made you do it. <laughs> I, I forced you, Paul. <laughs> You'll forgive me one day. This is why they call him the best setup man in the business. <laughs> it it Gets might not be to today. Say Conduit. <laughs> but you, you might forgive me one day. Oh, man. <laughs> Ulamog, not the card you want to see in your opener, especially after Mulligan, but yeah, looks like he's got a few lands, so he has to keep. In many ways, a Mulligan itself. All Ooh. right. Ooh. That's an interesting Long card. Long cut. Oh. Uh, Daniel. You know, that thing would have been a 10-10. You know, everybody wanted to see a Long Tusk Cup there. Totally. How do you not play it there? I'm offended. <laughs> Although he does uh, get the two energy lines. Looks up like a Rogue now. Refiner because uh, Daniel does not have a land here. Uh, he really wants to find a land. He did. This is also kind of interesting. I know he, he briefly paused. He does have Tireless Tracker in hand. He could have maybe considered not playing that land so he can get the, an extra card yeah. off of the Tracker. But he decided that was a little too risky, and right. he'd rather just wait. Oh, no. Is that yeah. two copies of Torrential Gear Hulk in hand for Michael? Yeah, but he does have a Harness Lightning. Okay. So okay. if he can buy himself some time. Right. But it is going to get kind of hot in here, isn't it? Like the... Yeah. That cub already has four energy sitting at the ready. Okay, and it looks like Daniel, uh, sorry, Michael wants to slow down Daniel's hand here. And, you know, given that Daniel did cast a Rogue Refiner off the two forests and the Servant, 
it kind of tells you that he might be a little bit landlight there, yeah. right? Because he was kind of looking for something, because otherwise you wouldn't want to use your energy off the conduit. Mm -hmm. But, oh, Daniel found another land, so excellent start here. The saddest long tusk cub in all yeah. Daniel the could potentially be waiting to just, like, play a cub later when he has a ton of energy. I mean, he already right? has four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe he wants to get it out of harness lightning range. Right. In the meantime, he's doing just fine for himself with the tireless yeah. tracker. He's just going to get in there. Yeah, it's going to be really hard for Mike to come, come back from this. Yeah, Mike goes, come at me. No problem. And Daniel just immediately snaps off and says, sure, yeah, take and, it. And, and now a long tusk cub. Michael really needs to find Radiant Flames. I, I think he boarded one copy in, and that won't get rid of the Long Tusk Cub, but at least it'll get rid of the Rogue Refiner and the Tireless Tracker that's on the board. Totally. Well, let's see if he can do it. Yeah. Do you think he can? Huh. Interesting that Mike kept in Magma Spray in this matchup. I don't think that card's a the, 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 the kind hmm. of card that you want here. I think I would much rather prefer having Sweepers. And, and Harness Lightnings as my way to deal with creatures. Could have used a Magma Spray earlier, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right. Ooh, and he finds a nice little use for one right here. Yeah. Daniel Forney on end step says, I'd like to sacrifice a clue trigger on my tracker. And Michael says, ahem. <laughs> Magma spray that before the counter gets Yeah, but it. at the same time, right, like, it feels pretty good, I guess, that you kill the tracker. But Daniel got a card out of it. Daniel got two cards out of it. There's still a clue sitting there on the board. And Daniel has a really great board still. Oh, and that was a negate. Huge draw from Daniel. Oh, no, look at that hand from Michael. It really was yeah. two Ulamog, yeah. two no. <laughs> Torrential Gear Hulk, and a Negate. Daniel kind of trying to figure out like how aggressive he wants to get with the Long Tusk Cub. Mike has no red mana available to him. Nope. So, so Daniel can just opt to just uh, attack with a 4-4 Long Tusk Cub here. And yeah, and he's trying to end this game quickly. This is going to put Mike down to 4. Yeah, this is a big attack. He gets two energy back, a little rebate there. <laughs> and basically, he's just going to want to be able to leave up Negate here, right? Right, so he can still go tracker land and keep up Negate. How can he lose? Yeah, it's going to be tough. He Game even has Fortnite. Chandra protection. The Long Tusk Cub can be a 5-5, five -five and he's holding a Negate in hand. Yeah. Oh, oh look at that wow. miserable hand from Michael. He's going to have to extend... The hand here as Daniel Fournier moves to 12 and 2. And you know the, the crazy good part about for this? Top eight. What's that? Michael, I think, boarded out two Ulamogs. He drew the only two Ulamogs really? left in his deck. You know, yeah. I bet that's exactly what he was just telling Daniel. Boy, because he's like, <laughs> I only had two left. Yeah. I'm so unlucky. I'm so unlucky. <laughs> How did this happen? Uh, that is a tough beat, though, for Michael. Uh, just the draw just really did not come together well for him. And uh, he ends up picking up the loss here and probably is out of top eight contention. Daniel Fournier, though, may have just put himself into the top eight. He may have to play next round, but things are looking good for him. That's going to do it for round 14 coverage. We'll be back with more after this.